Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, known as a, also as a guardian of the feminine, which is what's pushing me to do this talk today. Um, I'm doing a lot more work around the divine feminine, it seems, more and more, in addition to and parallel to my relationship coaching for women to attract healthy relationships and be in their hearts and everything else. But today I just want to put some things together that have been bugging me for a long time and I want to put them out here because it may scare some people <laughs> but also may inspire. So I'm going to give you the what may be the bad news up front and then give you some ideas for solutions, I hope. We'll see how this goes, so bear with me. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I'm, I'm jumping right ahead. Um, I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's hopefully will inspire the Feminine Heart after I shock the Feminine Heart. <laughs> um, and this is number 393. So seven days to my 400th broadcast. So that'll be um, next Friday. Wow. It's coming soon. And yesterday I did a talk called... Um, Well, yeah, no, let me start. Sorry, let me start with today's topic first and then I'll include yesterday's as well. So, today's one is Ladies, you've been hoodwinked, and here's why. And I'll get to that in a second. Yesterday, I talked about. Um, actually, I was, I, was, I was talking about an article that I, I, was, I was inspired or provoked or upset by an article I read yesterday, which I posted yesterday, and I talked about it in the broadcast, about how the United States is the 10th least safe country for women behind Saudi Arabia, Syria, um, Congo, India, other countries like that. And America is the only Western world, the only first world country, in quotes, out of 193 countries to be in the top 10. And that's not a good ranking, that's a low ranking. So that was one of the things I put out, which wasn't meant to be shocking, but it was just disturbing when I read it. I wanted to share the, my full thoughts about that. Because of the rape culture and the Me Too and everything else going on, the last few years have been challenging. So here's something else to add to that conversation but I want to turn I want to turn this around when I get to that point. So first of all, some some data points you might not be aware of. I recently saw a post that said that in 2013 there were over seven sorry over 600 bills and laws governing the female body in this country, and there were none governing the male body. 600 different bills, regulations, and laws that control you, basically. Did you even know that? That's one thing. Second part, and this is something from history, and these things I've been studying for many years, so I'm putting a lot of things together from like olden times in quotes to modern times, olden times, to modern times, one of which is the Bible. And I know some people are going to hate me for this because they may be traditional Bible thumpers or believers or... Um, believe Jesus saved them. Now I'm a Jew, so I don't have a, I don't have that, that guilt or that challenge. But one thing about the Bible you may have noticed when you've been reading it is that women didn't figure very well in leadership. And the thing is, there's a very good reason for that. Because it was written by men. And the Bible, just so you know, had some missing components because when the Bible was written, this is back in that was this is back probably the th around twelve hundred years ago. As in, it wasn't when Jesus was alive, by the way. The Bible came along after he passed away, many years after. So the things in the Bible were slanted by the people who were controlling the writing of the Bible. Makes sense. There's an old quote from many years ago, talks about history is written by the victors. The Bible was written by those who controlled it. So things like the Gnostic Scrolls, which have been discovered in the last few years, which is basically a discovery of the goddess principles. You haven't seen those in the Bible, have you? That's missing. So... Biblically, women have not been respected, honored, and equal to men. Missing piece. So that's another piece. There's a couple more I'm going to throw in there before I turn the corner. So bear with me. I'm actually going to turn, I hope to turn the ship around. Um, the focus of women being second class citizens in this culture has been going on for generations. Actually, I would say worldwide it's been happening a lot too. And, and this is not news to a lot of people I know. But these pieces I'm giving you are subtle and less subtle points about why this keeps happening because the culture hasn't changed its mindset yet and there's another one I was looking for which I haven't seen yet, it's in there somewhere <laughs> so bear with me that is 
another piece of the puzzle of what it is that has created a world where women set, are coming up second to men and why I think it's definitely out of alignment because if you know my broadcast you know what I talk about I'm about supporting women being in power being in the feminine being in leadership and these are reasons why it hasn't happened yet so again yes it is broadcast about America being an unsafe country for women I'd advise you watching that broadcast if you haven't seen it and there's an article link in the comments so you can watch it there or read it about it rather yourself um the Bible is another one. The bills and laws that govern women's rights. I mean, just look at just some of the things to put on your mindset. I talked about this in relationship context before, but I'm going to put it in this context now. Up until the 1960s, most women didn't have their own jobs, or bank accounts, or housing, or cars, or freedoms. Up until about that time, so most of your parents' generation and before, Women basically were living at their parents until they met, met a man or a man met them, recorded them, took them out of the house, put them in his house. So ladies, you didn't really have much freedom until 60 years ago, 50 years ago. So it's only recent. Yes, there's also the suffrage, the suffrage movement with women getting the vote, which has been just over 100 years now. So in some ways, it's only starting to happen where women are getting the power or getting the freedom or getting the ownership of their rights finally delivered and it's still coming so I'd like to think that my contribution <laughs> my invitation my suggestions my talks are helping women remember the truth which is you fully deserve equality you fully deserve respect you fully deserve to be equal to and better than men in some areas let's be real about that and also to be allowed to express fully your divine nature both both energetically and and sexually and and creatively every area I'm getting a little meow in the corner you might be hearing which is from a uh, a friend of mine who likes to add to my broadcast <laughs> I'm at my cat sit by the way it's why I'm a different background than usual because I'm I'm uh, exactly yeah taking care of my friend's cat so can you back on track thank you for distracting me this stormy <laughs> he's making a funny face at me so this this broadcast is in some ways um, a provoking psyche. Sorry, a, provo a provo provocation to the psyche. I was trying to say, let's get my ad adjective right. But also as a as an as a suggestion, an invitation, and a encouragement to say that first of all, I'm certainly not certainly not the only man who's talking to you about this. Speaking, standing up for women, honoring women, respecting women, I know that. But there's more of us needed. So for the men watching this, I hope you're watching this and saying, yes, I want to be part of this conversation too. I want to add to this context and respecting, honoring women in life, not just in relationship, but everywhere. You know, I, my tagline I've been using lately is I help women find, I help strong, successful business women find balance in love, life, and business. Not just love, but in life and business too, because there's an imbalance that is happening for many years and the world hasn't changed yet in a lot of ways. The structure hasn't turned the corner yet to honor women except in very small places, or the very narrow places. For example, in the entrepreneurial field, women nowadays have much more freedom because the entrepreneurial world is pretty unmapped, which is a good thing. So for those who want to be coaches and speakers and leaders, there's room for that, thankfully, and it's actually probably the best place to do it. But the corporate structure hasn't yet shifted, and it's one of those things that's missing and maybe it's because it's old, I don't know. There's, there's a, that's what I'm feeling something else come through, which is recognizing how the corporate structure has yet to collapse. I'm not sure if collapse, because the, the, the bulk of the way the corporate structure works is not about the individual anyway. And women in the collaboration and cooperation of energetics and the feminine are very much about supporting the people, not the structure. So I believe the feminine may be, may, interesting, okay that maybe the feminine may in fact foretell the collapse of the corporate industrial complex that's no longer functioning and working for any of us. I didn't plan on talking about that, but that's what came through. So there are many instances in history where women have lost out, where have been reduced to second best, have been used as chattel property. That was back in the Middle Ages. Yes, we've come a long way since then, but some of those underlying cultural beliefs still per, still pervade their way through modern thinking even now and when we and it's funny because what 
the subtlety of this, and I want to play this thing out. When women step out to leadership, it's like, yeah, great, wonderful stuff. Because we're so surprised. Because it's not normal yet. And this is the part that we're still growing into, I understand. But the recognition that women... Here's the way I'd put it. And it's going to sound really strange, but trust me with this. When women are in leadership and taking rank in jobs and positions and everything from leading the government to being part of the president, running their own companies, being the most highly paid actor in a movie, whatever those things are, and we don't think about it, we don't give a second thought. That's when we finally got to the point. Because right now, when we, that happens, we're all like, yes, 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 it's about time. That's still in the place where it's not normal yet. And I feel this this desire to express this, that I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it more and more, yes. I mean, we're in a, I know we're in a journey. We're in a progression from the old paradigm, which is never honoring women, or very minimally, to a more honoring place we're in now, to a place where the honoring is just automatic, because we are there. That's the vision I'm holding for where we're going. I hope we get there before, we, <laughs> before certain people drive this planet off a cliff, <laughs> metaphorically speaking. But watching what's happening now, for example, with, with uh, I mentioned yesterday about how um, Kennedy's retiring from the Supreme Court, and now that Roe Ro versus Wade is coming under threat already, even though nothing's happened yet, he's not leaving to the end of, the, end of July. But there's fear and concern about this. It's like, it's time to wake people up. People, not just women, men and women, both to wake up to this conversation. Because a lot of people are asleep at the wheel, so to speak, where they're not being involved, invested, or, or concerned about having a dialogue. And it's not necessarily about voting, although voting's part of it, but having a conversation consciously, having a conversation in coffee shops, round tables, family, family dinners, on social media, about the journey we're taking, the place we can go, and where if we don't do something, where it may end up where we don't want it to be. It's becoming a manifesto. <laughs> Wasn't planning this, but you know. But, and, but and, uh, hang on a second. Let me throw a piece in about relationships since this one the primary focus has been, although today it seems to be shifting slightly, is when in relationship, women are treated equally by men across the board. Hopefully it happens in your relationships. So many of you watching, how can you respect your female partner? Because this is for heterosexual relationships, by the way, of course, um, this context. That men, where can you raise the bar respect for your woman? Ladies, in relationship with your man, where can you own your equality with him and show him by, or invite him to respect you in that place? Because it's time. So that's the relationship piece I want to throw in there because that's about mutual respect. And it works both ways, by the way. Just to be clear, ladies, you just please respect your men as well. I'm not going to say only women get this. Let's be fair. But I'm realizing more and more that this conversation about having equality and having honor and respect, mutual respect in relationship, mutual respect in culture, mutual respect in society is what we're heading towards. And hopefully this talk and other talks like it will help to have the conversation. to put this this is basically part two of yesterday's broadcast because when I read that it stunned me and just to recap for those who didn't just joining me um, there was an article I posted the link yesterday and I, I talked about it in my Facebook live yesterday about the fact that America United States this country is number 10 out of 193 countries of the most unsafe countries in the world for women in 2016 actually 20, 28 2016, 2018. I think the I think the I think the survey was from last year, so it'll be 2017. But that's what we're living in right now. And in fact, I know that the survey was done after the Me Too conversation came out, so it probably added to the fuel about women not being safe because it's becoming more public. So my message, my invitation, my my mission is to help change that paradigm. To really put put this conversation in context so that ladies can feel safe in this country. I mean, ideally nation, worldwide, not just nationwide, but worldwide because that's something that's still catching up. But at least in this country where we're so far ahead, in quotes, and so far um, civilized, in quotes, we're number 10 behind countries that we know are having serious issues. But we're so far behind countries that we think we're equal to. So, and by the way, countries like Russia, 
like Germany, like Argentina, are more safe than this country for women, according to that review. So just think about that for a second. So, having said all that, and having put this out, my um, intention with this broadcast was to simply speak to this so that hopefully those of you watching go, oh, I didn't think about that. This is more of a thought uh, thought provoking broadcast versus a solution oriented broadcast. The solution I do recommend though is kind of having a conversation about this, talking with your friends, talking with your partners, talking with your co workers to bring to light this imbalance so it can become balanced. Because it's time. Um, in relationship, that's where I'm going to put that one in there because I've got to stay true to my, my focus and my work. Um, and in life as well. So I think that's it. That was It's funny, I, I had a lot more thought, fuel, I thought I had a lot more oomph and momentum in this one, but that's apparently where it's going. So I know, and by the way, just a sidebar slight self-promotion, I know that there's another book brewing. <laughs> My second book comes out in, in, in August, a collaborative book, but I've got a, the sketch marks of a book called Awakening the Divine Feminine because of all these talks I've been doing has started to push something out inside of me that's going to come out in writing, so that's coming just so you know that, and I'm also um, putting together a, a series of talks with some really cool people that's going to come out probably in September now, um, which is about embracing the divine feminine through love, that's that's coming, so those are, those are teasers of what's coming through, not a trailer, but a teaser, so having said, that's probably what this is stirring up for me, is why I'm talking about it now, because it's been on my mind a lot, so thank you for watching, and allowing me just to pour out what's going in, on in here. Um, I hope this has been of benefit to you. And if it has, please let me know in the comments below. I will respond there. If you didn't see yesterday's broadcast, please watch that one too, because that talks about the article I was mentioning earlier in this broadcast. And hopefully there's more coming tomorrow, which will be more about the relationship-centric conversation I normally bring to the table. So thank you for watching this broadcast. Um, this is my 393rd Facebook Live in a row. Karen, uh, I have to read this out because it's got on YouTube and I want to see the comments, Karen. So, uh, thanks, Barry. I hope men begin to realize that more equality for women doesn't equate to less for men. Oh, absolutely. Yes, Jake Marsha, Divine Feminine. Yes, I love it too. Actually, Karen, let me just underline that because you're very right about that. Yes. Um, men, if you're watching this, <laughs> let me be clear. Having women be equal to you isn't a threat. It is not a threat. When women are equal to you, that actually is better for you. Yes, it's better for you because it takes the pressure off. The biggest challenge men face, I think, in a lot of ways, and this is a whole other PS that you just gave me, so thank you for that, Karen, is a lot of men face this fear of being beaten up, beaten by another man because we're in the structure of being competitive. Men are innately, as the masculine, have a competitive energy. When women step into that arena, we think the same thing about them. We think that women are going to compete with us, and if we give them equality, oh, there we go. Thank you. Now I see if, if we men give women equality, that's going to play, make the competition harder for us. And it's not true. Thank you. That was like, oh, that was the piece of sitting in. Thank you for that. I appreciate it, Karen. We as men have forgotten our true power, our true nature, our true power of the masculine heart, the direction, the focus that allows us to lead in cooperation, not competition. And when we forget, sorry, when we remember that we can lead in compassion and care then having women equal to us is a good thing it takes the pressure off as I mentioned because we don't have to fight on our own we actually have somebody working with us not against us, not competing with us but with us and that's the power of the feminine that we desire, we need and we crave there we go thank you, that was the piece I was waiting for <laughs> okay, so that now giving you something I can, you can use I hope so, so that, 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 that's not a talk that, that, just, that was a PS I wanted to put in so thank you for that Karen um, yeah thank you. yes Karen we, we, yes you, ladies you definitely need more men on your side so I'm not the only one I know I mentioned at the beginning but definitely more men talking about this and re remembering this and sharing this is needed more than ever so um, thank you for watching this broadcast as always this is my 393rd 7 more to 400 um if you haven't seen my other broadcast, you can find these on my Facebook page, business page, which is Barry Selby, the author, also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, the playlist is Messages of the Masculine. These also will be on my business, on my website, where you find out all about my work, 
And if you're interested in getting love and relationship help, go and get sign up for a discovery session, which is barryselby.com forward slash chat. Um, also on there's my video blog and also my book, coaching, online program and other stuff too. Uh, there's nothing to say about that. Um, if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast and you're watching it in the replay, please put them below and I'll answer them later on. If you know anybody should watch this, I'm gonna share this out. Please share it with those who might get value from it. Maybe you'll scare some people with it. <laughs> um, and with that, I will see you again tomorrow with 394. I don't know what the topic is going to be. It may be a different direction. We'll see. But uh, thank you for watching here. And thanks for the comments and the input, ladies. I appreciate that. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.